Um, look, just, just talk to me a bit about this, because a lot of people, myself included, as I'm sure you can tell, get absolutely livid at this idea that someone could essentially take Britain for a ride and commit heinous crimes. We're not talking about, you know, a little bit of cheeky tax fraud here. We're talking about rape, murder, paedophilia. Why can't we get rid of these people? Well, the truth of it is, in the vast majority of cases, we do. And the law for many, many years has allowed for the deportation of anyone uh, who doesn't have a right to remain, an indefinite right to remain in the UK, to be deported as a result of a serious criminal conviction. And um, what Suella Braverman is doing is just getting on a, on, on a sort of populist bandwagon uh, by presenting the idea that somehow this is routine and that, that serious criminals are routinely allowed to stay in the country uh, as a result of some uh, undefined human rights law or uh, undefined uh, provision that somehow uh, permits well, clearly them to take it's happening though, isn't it? But, cl but clearly, 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 if anyone, if one murder or one rape or one paedophile from a foreign country is one too many, isn't it? So how are people abusing the modern slavery law? Or in your opinion, are they just not? Well, very few are. And I don't, I, I, you see, it's very dangerous to use the word abuse, isn't it? Or abuse a law. If that means that we have a legal right that's established in British, in English law, and somebody makes a claim before a court, then it, it's, it's only an abuse if somehow the court is misled and doesn't, doesn't do its job properly. Uh, if, in fact, as happens in the great majority of these cases, the court rules very quickly against the claim and allows the deportation to proceed. And that's just a, a, a justice system in action. I'm not sure what people want to happen. Uh, do, do people want to have no legal process, just throw people out of the country without any, any well, process? Well, I think, I think, well, no, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily that, right? I think what it is, is the, the idea that what happened there was able to happen. So in the example that she gave, a South African chap uh, raped someone, was in prison here, claimed modern slavery... Uh, I believe went out and raped someone again. Um, uh, how can that happen? Once someone commits those that kind of crime, how can they still claim that they're the victim of modern slavery? Can't that crime trump them being a victim of modern slavery? Yes, and in the, in the great majority of cases it will. And I think the real concern in this case is the fact that this person was at liberty and uh, pending mm. a, a decision of the court in order to go and commit another rape. Uh, it's not the fact that there is the right to make a claim. It's the fact that someone was back on the streets and able to commit a rape that's the problem. Uh, and that, that's a problem that could have been resolved by the existing law. Uh, and when you talk about rape, it's, it's ironic that we have the Home Secretary of this government uh, making a, a statement about rape victims. When rape victims in this country country are waiting on average almost five years to give evidence about being raped in court, when only about 4% of rape, of, of rape uh, uh, complaints ever make it to trial. And yet here we have one or two extreme examples of extraordinary and unusual events somehow taking centre stage. What we should really be doing is worrying about those thousands of victims of sexual violence who never get to give evidence at court because it lasts, because the delays in the system are so long as a result of this government's inaction on on criminal justice, you, you, but they you can never the get their case before a court and they just give up. You raise a very, very, very good point, right, which is that actually people genuinely don't feel safe on the streets as it is, right, because people are either allowed out whilst it takes them years to face justice or, or have their innocence proved as well, which is another important element of it as well, because you wouldn't want something hanging over your head, would you, if you knew you were innocent of it and it was demonstrably innocent as well and you accused of something heinous, right, for a long period of time and if you're, even if you're allowed out on the streets, you're probably not going to be able to work and you become a social pariah and you know, everyone reads the headline, don't they, on the front page about you being accused of something and then they don't read the nib on page 34 about you being found innocent of it. So I do get that. But just sticking to the kind of the brief of the law that we're, we're going to be discussing with you right now. Yes. OK. So in terms of deporting foreign criminals, you think, in your opinion, we do quite enough of that. We have not got a, a, a problem, in your view, when it comes to struggling to deport foreign criminals. It's just a few who slip through the net. Yes, it's a few who strip the, through the net, lar uh, uh, get through the net, largely because of a lack of resource in the system. We, we know that there are nowhere near enough police officers uh, on the streets. We know that there are no, no, nowhere near enough police officers dealing with serious sexual crimes in this country. And we know that the legal system is completely incapable of dealing with serious crime. And in fact, the Crown Court at the moment is shut because there's no barristers uh, available to deal with many of these cases. So the truth of it is that we have a systemic problem of underinvestment in criminal justice 
justice. And inevitably, when you underinvest in a system, you're going to get people slip through the net. And, 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 you know, for this government, which has been in charge of the criminal justice system for years and years and years, including when uh, Liz Truss was in the cabinet for many years, they've allowed this system to, to develop in the way that it is. So it's, it's rich, frankly, coming from the, the, the government that's left the system in such chaos and such disarray and such dysfunction to then say, well, let's blame it all on the European com com uh, um, Court of Human Rights. It's nonsense. We, 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 there is nothing in European human rights law which prevents us deporting uh, foreign criminals who have committed serious crime. And we do so every single day of the week. So for me, this is just political grandstanding, well, the worst kind.